All right, everybody. So want to hear about how Trump might actually win re-election? Oh, I can't wait to see if this pans out, honestly. As far as his foreign policy goes, I sincerely hope that someone else gets in. But, you know what? In terms of his domestic policy, I really hope no one else gets in. It's an interesting situation I'm in on that. So... <clears throat> This one new poll of Democrats explains why Donald Trump will be re-elected. Uh, just 25% of Democratic voters want a candidate promising a bold new agenda, which is exactly what party and media elite elites will cram down their throats. On the one hand, a new Fox News poll spells doom for Donald Trump, with a fistful of Democratic presidential candidates beating the incumbent former Vice President Joe Biden cleans Trump's clock by 10 percentage points. 49% to 39%. Vermont Senator, Senator Bernie Sanders uh, wins 49% to 40%. Senator Elizabeth Warren uh, ekes out 43% to 41% victory. And Senator Kamala Harris and South Bend Mayor Pete Buttigieg both squeeze out as a one-point margin, 42% to 41%. On the other more consequential hand, that same poll underscores why Trump is almost certainly going to win re-election in 2020. One of the questions asked Democratic voters whether they will vote for a candidate with a bold new agenda, or one who will provide steady, reliable leadership. Uh, fully three-quarters of respondents want the latter, with just 25% interest in the sort of bold new agenda that virtually all Democratic candidates are peddling so far. This finding is consistent with other polling that shows that Democratic voters are far more moderate than their candidates even allowing for doubting of self-described Democrats who identify as liberal over the past dozen years. Gallup found last year the 54% of Democrats support a party that is more moderate, while just 41% want one that is more liberal. Yeah, more liberal. The Democrats decided that because the far left was so loud, they must be the majority, and decided to cater to the far left. And there you hell, they even have a far leftist in the party in the form of uh, AOC, who alienates and dis disrespects her own party peers. Because she's a far leftist, and they're technically more moderate. Anyway, with the exception of Joe Biden, all of the Democratic candidates, certainly the leading ones, are pushing a massively expansionist agenda, thus putting themselves at odds with their own base. Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All would cost $37 trillion, yikes, in new spending over a decade. And his free college plan would cost the federal government about $47 billion a year. Also yikes, but not as much. He plans to send much, much more, as does Elizabeth Warren, who's, who is running on promises to spend $3.3 trillion over a decade. God, why do they think we can afford to spend all this damn money and we can't even afford to take care of our country's infrastructure because our military budget is too damn high. The new giveaways that will be paid for by an unworkable, probably unconstitutional wealth tax that will at best raise $2.75 2, Yes, which means we'll have to borrow money from our allies as if they weren't sick, enough, sick of that already. Now, would her wealth tax be unconstitutional? Probably. Because you see, at least according to uh, new, uh, former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, who is also a billionaire, uh, he is opined that such a wealth tax would be unconstitutional because the 16th Amendment only allows an income tax. This argument relates to the unconstitutional limit, the un, to the constitutional limitation on direct taxes. Article 1, 50, 58 provides that <clears throat> Congress shall have the power to, or no, not 58. There's some weird symbol in the article. Article 1, section 8. Congress shall have the power to land, collect taxes, duties, imposts, and excises to pay the debts and provide for the common defense and general welfare of the United States. Section 9 has the following reservation. No uh, capitation or other direct tax shall be laid unless in proportion to the census or enumeration herein, herein before directed to be taken. 
The phrase here and before direct refers to Article 1, Section 2, relating to the composition of the House of Representatives, Section 2 provides. Representatives and direct taxes shall be apportioned among the several states according to their respective numbers, which shall be determined by adding to the whole number of free persons, three-fifths of all other persons. In other words, by counting slaves as three-fifths of a person. That's how it was back then, I guess. So basically what we're looking at here is uh, you can only collect, correct, collect direct income tax. You cannot collect wealth tax. That certainly seems to be reflected by the articles here. And by the way, for those liberals who think that the Tenth Amendment basically allows, uh, allows the, uh, the government to basically provide with whatever socialist program you think it does. And no, 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 no. That is not what that uh, part of the Constitution means, because that would literally uh, undo and, and uh, unbalance the rest of the Constitution. It does not provide them with extra special powers, because then they wouldn't be a limited government anymore. The Constitution guarantees a limited government to a certain extent. Yes, they are, Congress is required uh, to see to the common defense and general welfare of the United States within the powers they have been granted by other amendments. In short, much of what Bernie Sanders and alternatively what Elizabeth Warren wants is unconstitutional and illegal. Smarty pants. <clears throat> anyway, that little tangent is over. The greater and less, uh, to greater and lesser degrees, the other Democratic candidates are also offering variations on the big government or a bold new agenda theme for this. They get massive online attaboys, which make it seem as if there is a groundswell of support for such positions based on data from the Hidden Tribes Project, which uses polling and survey data to get a truer sense of voter and partisan ideology. The New York Times reported that outspoken groups of Democratic-leaning voters on social media is outnumbered roughly two to one by the far more moderate, more diverse, and less educated group of Democrats, who typically don't post political content online. That same dynamic plays out in the more traditional uh, commentariat as well. Writing in The New Republic, Alex Perrine takes it as a given that the Democrats should nominate a big spending president, and effusively praises Elizabeth Warren, especially for demonizing specific individuals and companies, despite her weak poll numbers. Political claims that Warren is now a potential compromise nominee, a fantasy bellied by the small number of actual Democrats interested in anything resembling a bold new agenda. Yeah, Elizabeth Warren. Say goodbye to a balanced budget if you get her in there. Say goodbye. Because let's say... Let's just say that uh, her uh, wealth tax would be constitutional, would it, would, and it would not. Uh, it would only raise two point seven trillion for her three point three trillion. In short, the difference would have to be borrowed. Borrowing is not part of a balanced budget. Borrowing literally requires taking money from an ally in excess to, co to, cover the, to cover the gap, which would put us further in debt, which is the last thing we need. And God only knows what Bernie would cause. So, but what about Joe Biden? Who is leading the Democratic field by a large margin, despite being the least woke candidate out there? The Fox News poll has Biden at 32%, Sanders at 13%, and nobody else even double digits at the Wall Street Journal. Daniel Henninger suggests that Biden is in fact an existential threat to the incumbent precisely because he might be as sleepy as Trump recently called him. Uh, this assumes, of course, that Biden survives the nomination process. As the far ahead leader of the massive Democratic field, he is the largest not just of Donald Trump, but out of his fellow partisans too. He's already been dinged over his creeping and his decades-old plagiarism is now being re uh, relitigated. It seems as if every day brings a new crisis or controversy, such as Biden's 
uh, warm statements toward segregationists in the 1970s. His eulogy of racist Senator Strom Thormund. Uh, or that of his son, Hunter, whose personal life is a total shit show, who makes shady foreign deals in his father's name, and on his dad's reputation and connections. Yeah, and not to mention all the creepy groping and kissing and ear whispering, just ugh. The guy's a creep. The total creep. Under the best circumstances, Trump is almost certainly not going to win 50% uh, of the vote in 2020. Despite being a robust, having, despite a robust economy, his approval rating peaked at 46% shortly after he assumed office. His path to a second term will look a lot like the path to his upset victory in 2016. He will need to scratch out a victory where virtually every vote and every insult counts. But here's the thing: Trump knows how to do this. Has the power of incumbency and things short of a massive economic downturn really can't get worse for him. He has weathered every disturbing revelation, every tempest over unprofessional, unethical behavior, every lapse in taste or decorum. His numbers aren't going to get any lower. Earlier this year at the Conservative Political Action Conference and more recently in Florida, a mega rally, he's shown an ability to go big and fire up his already intense following. Less than a week away from the first Democratic candidate's debate and a year plus away from the general election, Biden, whose history of, of gas and awful legislation is legendary, has nowhere to go but down. Yeah, here's what I think's gonna happen. Trump's only real contenders are gonna be Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. Those are gonna be his only real contenders. With everything that's going on with Biden lately, no one's gonna want him in office. Nobody. You might get a contender out of Pete Buttigieg. Out of all of the, uh, the Democrats, but a geek seems actually kind of likable, and he has more respect for the Constitution than they do. He's not a full-on socialist like they are, I don't think. He's more of a true liberal capitalist, although he still probably wants to levy a fair share of taxes. I'm probably going to vote for Bill Weld, honestly. I will probably vote for Bill Weld. But, you know, if Trump creates a platform that I can respect, I may vote for him again as I did last election. So for me, it's either going to be Trump or Bill Weld. The Democrats have to try real hard to appeal to me. And people who think like me, which if you're uh, in the part of the political spectrum anywhere in the uh, vicinity of Milton Friedman, who I've actually been compared to uh, many times, you're not going to want a Democrat. There's nothing they could do to honestly win someone like me over. No fucking way. Anyway.